Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Welcome, dear friends, to this uh, special garden mass. Well, we're in the annex. To for the third Sunday of ordinary time. And as I always do, may I honour the other members of our Mass team here. Brother Richard, my contra, who lives here at St. Clement's and works as an iconographer, a very talented young Italian, Alessandro Ripetti from Northern Italy, and our loving and lovely young married couple, Cosmo is in the tent of meeting at the moment, <laughs> and you will see him later. We ask the Lord, as we always do, to look upon us in our fragility, in our weakness, with kindness and with mercy. You, Lord, are my light and my help. Whom shall I fear? Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You, Lord, are the stronghold of my life. Before whom shall I shrink? Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. We hope in you, Lord. We hold firm and we take heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and, and on earth, earth peace to people, people of good will. We, we praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, direct our actions according to your good pleasure, that in the name of your beloved Son we may abound in good works through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, for ever and ever. Amen. <clears throat> A reading from the book of Isaiah. In days past the Lord humbled the land of Zebulun and the land of Naphtali, but in days to come he will confer glory on the way of the sea, on the far side of Jordan, province of the nations. The people that walked in darkness has seen a great light. On those who live in a land of deep shadow, a light has shone. You have made their gladness greater. You have made their joy increase. They rejoice in your presence as men rejoice at harvest time, as men are happy when they are dividing the spoils. For the yoke that was weighing on him, the bar across his shoulders, the rod of his oppressor, these you break as on the day of Midian. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. <clears throat> the response is, the Lord is my light and my help. The Lord, the Lord is, is my light and, and my help. <clears throat> the Lord is my light and my help. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the stronghold of my life. Before whom shall I shrink? The, the Lord, Lord is, is my, my light and my, my help. There is one thing I ask of the Lord, for this I long, to live in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to savour the sweetness of the Lord, to behold his temple. The, the Lord, Lord is, is my, my light, light and, and my, my help. help. <clears throat> I am sure I shall see the Lord's goodness in the land of the living. Hope in him, hold firm and take heart. Hope in the Lord. The, the Lord, Lord is, is my light, light and my help. help.
The second reading is from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. I appeal to you, brothers and sisters, for the sake of our Lord Jesus Christ, to make up the differences between you, and instead of disagreeing among yourselves, to be united again in your belief and practice. For what Chloe's people have been telling me, my dear brothers and sisters, it is clear that there are serious differences among you. What I mean are all those slogans that you have, like, I am for Paul, I am for Apollos, I am for Kephas, I am for Christ. Has Christ been parceled out? Was it Paul that was crucified for you? Were you baptized in the name of Paul? For Christ did not send me to baptize, but to preach of the good news, and not to preach that in terms of philosophy, in which the crucifixion of Christ cannot be expressed. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. <coughs> Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. Jesus proclaimed the good news of the kingdom and cured all kinds of sickness among the people. Alleluia. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. As he was walking by the Sea of Galilee, he, Jesus saw two brothers, Simon, who was called Peter, and his brother Andrew. They were making a cast in the lake with their net, for they were fishermen. And he said, follow me and I will make you fishers of people. And they left their nets once at once and followed him. Going on from there, he saw another pair of brothers, James the son of Zebedee and his brother John. They were in the boat with their father Zebedee, mending their nets, and he called them, at once leaving the boat and their father. They followed him. He went round the whole of Galilee, teaching in their synagogues, proclaiming the good news of the kingdom, and curing all kinds of diseases and sickness among the people. The good news of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord, Lord Jesus, Jesus Christ. Christ. Good. A few years ago, there was a full page advertisement in one of the Sunday newspapers. Full page. It headed a picture of a doctor a lawyer, a musician, and an army officer at the top. Underneath was written in bold, a vocation. What if you don't have one? The text continues, it was the first time I felt envious about anything, a young man told us recently. I looked around the dining hall and realised there were two kinds of people there. Those who had vocations, the rest of us who did not. The first group knew exactly where they wanted to go and how to get there. Their lives, I naively imagined, would be unswerving and purposeful, rich with certainty and fulfilment. By contrast, I, I felt muddled and irresolute. I found myself mentally trying on different jobs, but like second-hand clothes, none of them seemed to fit. Only in the next sentence do we find out what the advert is for. What, you may well ask, was this young man doing at the Army Officer Selection Board? The advertisement is 
quite clever, tries to kill the idea that a young man who is uncertain about his life has no place in the army. Uncertainty, it argues, it's not, it's not feeble-mindedness. After all, how can you commit yourself to something that you know nothing about? The army, so the argument goes, will give this unsure young man time to make up his own mind about his future. He will have time to discover if he really has what the recruiting officer calls a vocation to the army. When Matthew writes his call of the first disciples, there's no hesitation at all on the part of the four fishermen called. Matthew does not tell us why they follow Jesus. The call is very simple. Jesus says, follow me. First of all, you change your direction in life and you follow me. And then if you follow me, Jesus promises something. He promises them a new identity. If you follow me, I will make you into something. I will make you into fishes of people. But first, they have to change their direction. And Jesus calls them, notice it's very personal. He says, follow, follow me. And there's no hint about where they're going. There's no detail of what discipleship will actually involve. Nothing is promised. Nothing is signed. And you say, well, obviously things didn't happen as abruptly as that. The disciples didn't leave the security of their own home and the security of their good jobs in order to follow a stranger they knew nothing about. In their accounts, Luke and John do something interesting. They allow time for the disciples to get to know Jesus, to be exposed to his power and his teaching before they're called. The absence of this detail in Matthew points to the fact that he wants to focus on something very simple and important. He wants to focus on the authority of Jesus, that when he calls, people respond. John the Baptist is now in prison. The great voice of the wilderness is now silenced. It's time for Jesus to begin. And Matthew will show you that Jesus is the great fulfillment of the prophecy of Isaiah. He is the great light that has dawned. He is the one who begins his mission in Galilee of the Gentiles, a mission to all peoples. Matthew keeps the focus on Jesus and on the power of his word. Because discipleship is centered on Jesus. Because of who he is, he calls them into a relationship with him. Without that relationship, ministry is just a career. He calls them into a loving relationship with him first. And out of that relationship, they will minister to other people. Like Matthew, Paul in today's reading is focuses on Christian discipleship in the person of Jesus. Jesus is the great light, and no one, however exalted, can take his place. And Paul confronts the dissension among the Christian community in Corinth, on the south end of Greece, because they're making lesser lights into the great light. The church in Corinth is divided into factions. 
not over doctrinal differences, but over what? Over personality cults. Some are following Apollos. He is an eloquent Greek-speaking preacher who attracts the intellectuals to the faith. Others are attracted to Peter, and they stand under the banner of Peter. And some stay loyal to the person of Paul. They prefer his passion and his bluntness to the other two. This division in the church is, according to Paul, very destructive for unity. Christianity is Christ. It was Christ, as Paul said, who died for our sins and in whose name all Christians are baptized. Paul wants the community in Corinth to be a Christian community, not reduced to a faction that is under the awe of some charismatic leader in the community. No leader, however important, can attach disciples to himself. As Paul says later, there's only one foundation for the Christian community. For the foundation, nobody, he says, can lay any other than the one which has already been laid, and that is Jesus Christ. Paul resists any attempt to make Christian discipleship a matter of following this or that leader. We've heard it in the church, I am for John Paul. No, I am for Benedict. No, I am for Francis. Religious authority, dear friends, does not lead others to itself but to the Lord. He does not exult in itself, point to itself, delighting in its own power and privilege. That, dear friends, is clericalism. Real religion points away from itself. Think of John the Baptist with his disciples. He says, look there. There is the Lamb of God. And he lets his disciples go to attach themselves to Jesus. For John the Baptist and Matthew and Paul, there's only one answer to the question, who are you for? And that answer for the disciple is always the same. I am for Christ. Christ, our light and our help. Jesus Christ lightens our darkness and helps us to see the real meaning of light and put aside our differences. We pray for the Pope, all priests, deacons and religious that they may work with the spirit of ecumenism and understanding to other faiths. Lord, hear us. Lord, Lord graciously, graciously hear us. We pray for our government and those with great influence, that they would look to support those who are in need. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We pray for people who are homeless or in temporary accommodation. We ask that through local authorities and charities, help and homes can be found and offered to these people. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Thanks, Giselle. Thank you, Richard. So, thank you for continuing to send in your prayer petitions, and I'll read um, a few of them. Ah, dear Father McBride and your lovely team, I've been trying to write this note to you for the longest time, but finding the right words 
that can express all of the very positive feelings that I have concerning your garden mass and all of you has been very difficult. My husband and I have been tuned into your garden mass every single week, even when my husband was in the hospital for triple bypass surgery in 2021. The Mass, you, your team, the garden, the music, the outrageous plants and <laughs> blooms and flowers, the indoor beautiful rooms, the flawless filming are all wonderful and magical. They bring a wonderful fresh air for all of us. And now the addition of the very handsome Cosmo Emmanuel Dennis coming right around Christmas. What a perfect gift. After so many years as a Catholic, upbringing in Catholic schooling, I very rarely have heard teachings that I can relate to or find meaningful. I would like nothing more than to sit down with you and your team and maybe do lunch. But we live in Staten Island, <laughs> in New York, <laughs> and you in England. So at present, that idea is not too realistic. For my husband, Vin, and I, all of you and your mass have been a true blessing and a beautiful, unexpected miracle. So I want to let you all know and to say thank you to all of you. Please include Vin and my family. <coughs> we have two married daughters and three grandchildren and myself in your prayers. You, Father McBride, and your wonderful group are included in my prayers every single night. We're enclosing a little donation and our very best wishes to all of you. Stay well, stay on air, and stay in our lives sincerely. Dear Father Dennis and Mass team and our wonderful worldwide congregation, thank you very much for the prayers for my patience. I am so happy to tell you that Paula delivered after 12 hours of labour by emergency cesarean section. The baby's heart was compromised, but he was a fighter and did well. Both mum and baby went home safe and sound. As for Chris, we got the histopath results yesterday and they turned out negative for malignancy. Thank you, Lord. Again, thank you so much for your prayers. Warm regards as ever. Sharing a photo of Paula's baby and me. Very fine photo it was too. Dear Father Dennis, Brother Richard, Alessandra, Giselle, Paul and baby Cosmo, Thank you so much for the Garden Mass that I have been privileged to attend via YouTube for several months now. I love the thought-provoking sermons, and although I'm not really a fan of poetry, I do now find myself looking forward to the poems at the end of Mass. I'm writing to request prayers for two members of my family, one of whom is nearing the end of his life, the other is hoping to successfully bring new life into this world. My dear Uncle David, who's in his 80s, has been rather unwell for a couple of years now. He's seen many specialists over the recent months. In October, he was admitted to hospital for more scans and tests, enduring regular painful treatment to drain his lungs of fluid with characteristic good humour. His dearest wish <coughs> was to return home to his beloved wife of 58 years for Christmas. That didn't happen. And then they were told once palliative care could be arranged, he would be able to go home. He arrived home on New Year's Eve. I continue to pray for him, but rather than praying for a diagnosis and treatment, I'm now praying that he will be pain-free and comfortable in the time he has left. Secondly, I ask for prayers for my daughter, Charlotte, who is pregnant. Her first pregnancy ended in miscarriage. This pregnancy has not been easy so far, 
and she has had morning sickness at all times of the day and the night, which is something Giselle may or may not be able to relate to. I hope that the sickness eases off and she goes on to have a healthy baby due in June. With grateful thanks, God bless you all. Dear Father Dennis and your wonderful team, first let me congratulate the young parents on the birth of Cosmo. May he watch over the family which continues to be for us who watch the Mass a symbol of family unity and Christ's love. My gratitude also goes to the rest of the Mass team for the wonderful roles you play every Sunday in making the Mass such a wonderful experience for so many people around the world. Thirdly, I must register my great love of your poems and prayers which always seem to speak to me. I humbly request for your prayers for my son, who is weighed down with depression for such a long time. Please pray that God lifts this horrible veil of depression, enabling him to worship God and the many blessings bestowed upon us unencumbered. May he find peace and God's favour wherever he goes. Please also pray for him to find a spouse that is God-fearing and truly a match made in heaven. Bless them with a lovely family. I pray for the millions of people in Kenya and around the world who go hungry every day due to drought that stems from climate change. May the rains come so that everyone has food to eat. May God place people in authority who not only have the will but the determination to tackle climate change. Finally, may God bless you and your wonderful mass team so that you live a long, a heartily and truly blessed life from Kenya with love. God, our Father, so many voices, so many prayers, so many hurts, so many wounds. We gather all these cries and place them with confidence before you. With confidence because we make these prayers not in our own name, but in the name of the one you sent among us, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Richard. Come be with me, all you carry heavy burdens, I will give you rest. I
pray, dear friends, that my sacrifice and yours will be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands to the praise and glory of his name for our good and the good of all his holy church. Accept our offerings, O... Oh dear. How do I shut that? Well, that's new. I must have pressed the button. It's definitely not the iPad. Let me see. See if there's a notification. I've just got a little suspicion. Oh, I think you're right. Oh, that's <laughs> one. <coughs> you're winning over the iPad in terms of internet. Um, <laughs> we'll just put it on your desk. Yes. And I'll, going so on. I must have pressed the button <laughs> for re to on. receive notifications for BBC <laughs> News. Yeah. I'm mm. sorry about that. It's quite stressful, that sound, isn't it? I know. Well, everything. Oh, if there's news, Everything about the news is supposed to work people up. And, and what I can't stand lately is that every so. news is breaking news. Yeah, I know. Like. Yeah, that's doing my head. Yeah. In. It's lost all meaning. Margaret Snooks fell into a hole this afternoon. I mean, honest to God. <laughs> Are we on the preface? Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> that's right. The Lord be with you. And with, with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It, it is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For in you we live and move and have our being. And while in this body we not only experience the daily effects of your care, but even now possess the pledge of life eternal. For having received the first fruits of the Spirit, through whom you raised up Jesus from the dead, mm. we hope for an everlasting share in the Paschal mystery. And so with all the angels we praise you, as in joyful celebration we acclaim. Holy, 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 holy Lord, Lord, God, God of hosts, hosts. Heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy therefore these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dew falls, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. <clears throat> Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Philip, our Bishop, and all the clergy, 
Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Blessed Joseph, her spouse, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be coerced to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours for ever and ever. Amen. At the Saviour's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant our peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign for ever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Lamb of God, you take, take away, away the sins, sins of the world. world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but I only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
Ah, he's up and about, looking very fine. <laughs> Now, do you think that all the disciples remembered the very first time, the very first time they set eyes on Jesus? Paul and Giselle, do you remember the very first time you set eyes on one another? Not yeah. very easy because we were at, we were at an online date. So. Oh, of course. <laughs> Alessandro. Very well. Oh, that's good. <laughs> this poem is like Christina Rossetti. I wish I could remember that first day. It's beautiful. I wish I could remember that first day first hour, first moment of your meeting me. If bright or dim of season, it might be summer or winter for aught I can say. So unrecorded did it slip away. So blind was I to see and to foresee. So dull to mark the budding of my tree that would not blossom yet for many a May. If only I could recollect it, such a day of days. I let it come and go, as traceless as a thaw of bygone snow. It seemed to me so little it meant so much. If only now I could recall that touch, first touch, hand in hand, did one but know, did one but know. Oh. Let us pray. <clears throat> Grant, we pray, Almighty God, that receiving the grace by which you bring us to new life, we may always glory in your gift through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May God bless you and keep you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Dear friends, you send in prayer petitions to us every week and I'd like you and Brother Richard to pray a special prayer for a dear fellow redemptorist friend of Brother Richard in South Africa, Brother Gavin, who is in hospital. He's a young man and he's had a stroke. So please do remember him in your prayers and Renewed thanks to all of you who continue to support us in these cold days for our outreach, particularly to the Ukraine and to Zimbabwe. God bless you all and thank you sincerely. Mm -hmm.